it's Bonnie with So Inspired by Bonnie with another Tuesday's Tip. I'm going to go over to the computer and make sure that we are live and everything's working. So I'm not ignoring you. I just want to make sure that we're up and running. So let me refresh my page. And if you are here with us, be sure to uh, give me a shout or a hi or um, a like so that I know you're here. My page, my computer is taking a little while to get loaded. I'm just going to open new one. There we go. I think it's coming. Took it long enough. <laughs> okay. I'm going to wait just a minute to make sure that we have some, give people some time to show up. Um, I know that there's about a 10 second lag between what I see on my phone and what I see over here on the computer. Hi, Teresa. Good to see you. <clears throat> okay, so what I mentioned is that we're going to discuss uh, cutting machines and light boxes in the embroidery uh, room and how they help. Um, I wanted to also remind you that if you're not able to show up with us live, uh, where we can go over your questions live, I will repost this on YouTube as well as my Facebook page. I'll make it um, permanent on my Facebook page. And I also have it on my Pinterest page. So you can check any of those other places if uh, you so desire. Because <clears throat> I also know we have people that watch this that don't do Facebook. So I wanted to make sure everybody got the opportunity if they wanted to see it. You also might want to uh, sign up for our newsletter at www.soinspiredbybonnie.com. Um, you can sign up there and... Uh, get notifications of when we're doing our Tuesday live tips. Okay, looks like we have, obviously I'm not at my own home and I forgot to turn off their phones, but we'll let that pass and then we'll get started. I see Sandy is here, I see Anna is here, and Teresa, so we're going to go ahead and get started and discuss cutting machines and light boxes and how they help us in the embroidery room. Uh, a little history I wanted to go over. Uh, many, many years ago, people used the cutting machines in scrapbooking, and that's all they were used for, you know, making cards or etching on glass or using it with vinyl to do the really pretty stuff that you see on the walls, um, heat transfers for shirts and what have you. So. For a long time, cutting machines were solely used in the uh, scrapbooking arena. And then AccuQuilt came along for uh, quilters, is where it started, to cut out, because they have to cut out multiple pieces of the same size for their quilts. And so AccuQuilt is awesome when you want to cut out several pieces at the very same time uh, for a quilt or appliques. If you have a set uh, applique that they have a die for that you can use multiples and cut out multiples of your fabric. And then there seemed to be a crossover with the cutting machines. And cutting machines a few years back started becoming more and more popular in the sewing arena and with embroidery. And how they work or where I think they excel. I think every tool we have has its strengths and weaknesses in the sewing room and where the cutting machines I feel excel is when you have a really intricate cut and you don't want to spend the time cutting that little intricate cut out um, when it's still in the hoop or even if you're doing it manually the old-fashioned way uh, guiding your fabric in the machine with a sewing module um, or if you have an applique that, I mean, it works with any applique that you, well, it works with any applique. 
um, you can, as long as you can create an SVG file, and I know there's several uh, software companies out there that will create SVG files for your cutting machines. Uh, Floriani Total Control is one of them. I know that Imbrilliance does that. Um, and then the Babylock editing software, uh, which is also made by the same gentleman that created Designer's Gallery. Uh, I think it's Embroidery Works Every Day, if I'm not mistaken. But they all will create SVG files um, for your uh, appliques. So once you have an applique, and how you do that is you create an SVG file from the placement line. You zero out that placement line, create an SVG file, and then you can use it with your Silhouette Cameo or your Scan and Cut cutting machines, which is awesome. So if you have something that has a really tiny, intricate lot of detail, I would definitely use a cutting machine. If you have a design that um, you got from myself, we, uh, I include SVG files with my applique designs. A lot of designers do these days. A lot still don't. So that you can ask. You can either create the SVG file on your own or uh, find out if a designer does create the SVG files for your cutting machines. I, we do that here at So Inspired by Bonnie because more and more embroiderers are using their cutting machines for their appliques. If you're wanting to use one of the designs and do several of them, again, that's where your cutting machine is going to be have the advantage over the old-fashioned way of doing the placement line, putting your applique down, and then trimming around the fabric. So if you have multiples of them, it's a lot easier to use the cutting machine. And um, if you're using fabric, uh, I have a good friend uh, named Mitzi that did a bunch of testing and I've heard this from other sources I can't remember uh, where but I've heard it more than once that they seem to prefer the Terriel, is that how you say it? T-E-R-I-A-L magic to um, stiffen the fabric. So you want your fabric nice and stiff like paper or um, you know it, it not flimsy at all you need it nice and stiff to work well and get a nice crisp cut with uh, your cutting machine now um, I used on this one I just used heat and bond light and I cut this out with my cutting machine and you can see I have a little bit of fraying going on there could be my blade was a little bit dull or it could be just how it kind of responds with the heat and bond light. A word of caution, if you're using heat and bond, make sure it's the heat and bond light and also make sure it's for sewing, not for crafts. The glue that they use on the heat and bond for crafts will gum up your machine. So make sure that you get the heat and bond light that is for sewing. But you can put the heat and bond on your fabric that will stiffen it up where you can cut. But I've heard from more than one source, I haven't tried it yet. I'm uh, ashamed to admit I had the bottle, but I haven't tried it yet. But I've heard from many, uh, two or three sources, I can't say many, but two or three sources that seem to prefer the Terriel Magic uh, to stiffen up the fabric. And you just spray it on, let it dry. I imagine you could use your hair dryer if you wanted to speed up that drying process and get your fabric nice and stiff before you use it on your cutting machine. Okay, so how does this, we've kind of gone over um, how the pros and cons of using a cutting machine over an AccuQuilt. An AccuQuilt is great, but they have limited dyes, and quite frankly, the dyes are kind of expensive. Um, the Silhouette Cameo or your Scan and Cut machines are gonna be great if you have multiples of the same fabric. Uh, even, if, even if you don't have multiples of the same color fabric, you can cut out, say, four by four squares, uh, position them appropriately on your grid, and then line that up with the grid that's on your computer screen. Very easy to do in the silhouette. You can also use your scanner on your scan and cut. Very easy to do if you're using different colors of fabric. But if you're using the same design, gosh, it's so quick and easy to just pop them up there. Or if you're doing multiples, again, you can put up 
the different blocks of your fabrics on the grid and align up the different um, designs, merge your designs on your screen and you can cut those all out at the same time so that you have your pieces ready to go at the embroidery machine. Okay, so how does a light box fit into all of this? Well, my friend Holly Pike was doing a um, show and tell of her brand new beautiful sewing studio and she mentioned a light box and using that with her embroideries and I thought, you know, that's so clever. I just have to share that with you guys. So I went out and I, I had to get a new light box because I'm like the rest of you. I'm just, <laughs> I've got to have every tool in the shed. Um, so let me move this to the side. Uh, um, We've been using light boxes in the sewing room for years, and we've been using it for years with appliques. <clears throat> in the old days, we would use the light box to shine light from beneath so that we could hand trace out um, an applique and then, you know, stitch it out, or we'd bring the applique pieces back on top of our light box uh, so that we could align the pieces and make sure that we did have the head on top of the body or, you know, just had the pieces in the right place. So let me move this aside and show you this awesome light box. Um, I have no affiliation. I just saw, like I said, I was watching Holly show her a beautiful sewing room and she showed a light box. Now I did get the big size of this one, um, but it comes in several sizes. This is really a very can you see that see how thin this light box is it's almost it's almost as thin well I would say it is about as thin as or more so as my uh, surface pro uh, tablet computer it's really super thin and what you can do is um, it has three levels of light excuse me I'm gonna take a drink of water <coughs> Sorry about that. It has three levels of light. Uh, you can push it once, that's kind of a nice little glow, and then two and three, and it's really bright. And what you can do with this is, um, now this isn't, I just stitched out um, my little uh, Merry Mermaid. This is uh, design number one. This is not design number one, so it's not gonna line up, but I have it with my Glitter Flex. Um, <clears throat> but I hope you can see this and I don't get too much glare, but you can see right through the hoop and the placement line of the stitch out so that when you put your applique on here and let me get the right one, you can cut out with your cutting machine. This is something that I cut out my glitter flex on the silhouette cameo and then I'm just going to pull this off very gently and then I'm going to save these big pieces obviously I even save the smaller pieces because you can use them on little little things like oh um, oops just had this fall apart um, like a little star or something you, you, it's good to save all the little pieces so what the light box does is and I hope you can see this it helps you to see that placement line much better so that you can align your fabric onto the hoop. Now once you have that in place, what I would do is I'd just take a couple little pieces of scotch tape and you know put a little piece of scotch tape to hold it in place and then take it over to my sewing machine. But the act or excuse me the uh, cutting machines cut very close and tight to your placement lines. And so when you go to do the um, tack down stitch, it's just a little bit inside your placement line. So if you're off a little bit, you're gonna miss. Um, and the light box helps you get right on that. So then I would, again, put a couple little pieces of scotch tape, take it on over to my sewing machine, and tack it down with the tack down stitch. Again, this isn't the correct applique piece for my design, but you can see, even on the fabric, I hope you can see it, you can see through the placement line with your light box. So it kind of makes it a little bit easier um, to do that. Once you've got the tack down stitch done, 
then if you're using the um, let me turn this off if you're using the glitter flex once you've got that tacked down you can take it over to uh, your ironing surface and I like to use this uh, so Betty because they're nice and firm and then you can press it in place do not press on your light box <laughs> that would be a disaster I think it melted out so that's it to, uh, today's tip on you know how to use the cutting machines where they have advantages versus uh, you know trimming by hand and also um, your light boxes come in handy to help you with the placement and this is the finished stitch out I hope you can see her of this little Mary Mermaid okay and the stitch out for the little green one I had is see if I have the right one well I'm not finding her right now but that might be her no that's not her oh it's this one number four and this is the one and you can use fabric uh, with our applique designs our the I've used glitter flex with you would just use the fabric in the applique as you ordinary er, bleh, as you ordinarily would uh, any other applique design it's just I happen to use the glitter flex because I like the extra pop and sparkle so I'm gonna go to the computer and I'm gonna see if we have any questions I think it was pretty straightforward and um, an easy little tip today oh what brand of light box Wendy that's a great question let me unplug it I can't pronounce it <laughs> I think it's I think it is called AGP tech but let me put it up here so that you can see can you see that in the bottom um, left corner there AGP tech uh, P is in Paul and I just did a, uh, a search on Amazon for it and it comes in several different sizes um, this one ran about fifty dollars but there was another one that was a really good size one I thought for the twenty dollar range um, and the thing I liked about it was that it was so thin and it wouldn't take up a whole lot of space even though I got the big size it wouldn't take up a whole lot of space in my sewing room um, my sewing room although I have a dedicated room for sewing it's not a huge room and I need all the space I can get in that room so I, I look for things that are a little compact and will fit well um, oh Alaska's here Mike Yella, is that how you say it? From Alaska. Hi. Um, Janice says, great tip. Thanks. I'm glad you liked it. I thought it was, I thought Holly came up with an ingenious idea. And like I said, I just had to share it. Um, I think, I think that's all that we have for uh, questions or tips or, um, wait, there's another one. Oh, Judy Reeves, how do you store the glitter flex? I got some wrinkles and don't know if I can still use them. I think you still can use it even if you've got some wrinkles. What I would suggest is to um, get a, a Teflon sheet and um, you could do one of two things. You can either just try to lay it down flat, put some heavy books on it and let it sit for a while and see if some of those wrinkles don't come out. It kind of depends on how bad the wrinkles are. Another idea you might try is um, to take, uh, I hope you save the um, clear carrier that comes on top. You can actually um, maybe uh, put a Teflon sheet underneath it on the fusible side, have the clear carrier on top, and then press it down flat and see if that gets some of your wrinkles out. Once you pull it off of the clear carrier, <clears throat> you should be able to lay it down flat on your fabric and fuse it as you normally would, and those wrinkles should, should come right out. Depend Again, I'd almost have to see how bad the wrinkles were, but you should still be able to use it. How I like to store it, if I have the 10 by 12 sheets that we sell, I like to store those 
in a craft uh, box. Um, they come from, I get mine from Hobby Lobby. They're the clear uh, craft boxes that are 12 by 12, and I just lay them flat in there. If I get the 10 by 18 size, um, you can keep those rolled. Uh, most people keep their uh, vinyl rolled. Um, that works as well. When I have scraps, uh, little scraps like this, will go in my scrap box of the 10 by 12 you know, box. And I might have a sheet, because I do have, since I sell it, I have a lot of it. I'll have my scrap box, and then I'll have my you know, sheets that are, are, uh, haven't been used up. And I go to my scrap box first, and use what I can out of there. And if I don't have a scrap big enough, then I'll go to my bigger sheets. So I hope that answers your questions on, on the Glitter Flex. Um, Pamela has a question. Oh, she mentioned to Kathy that the Glitter Flex is a fabulous glitter vinyl. Yes, it is. Glitter Flex is a wonderful glitter vinyl. And we sell over um, a little plug here. We sell uh, 55 colors of Glitter Flex, maybe slightly more, but we have uh, one of the best stocks of Glitter Flex out there on the market. If not the best, I might be partial. <laughs> uh, B has a statement here. She said, my light box is old and much thicker than yours, although about the same size otherwise. I have used it for many years, but since I love yours so much, I might have to go get another one. Boy, I know the feeling, B. This one, I was so impressed when I saw Holly's. Um, I think hers was a little bit smaller. Again, I didn't need to go this big, but I thought, you know, I'd rather have one a little bit bigger so that if I do have a project where it's bigger than my hoop and I'm doing it by hand, I can still see it. Um, but it's really thin and so easy to so easy to store I think I can you know keep it in its box if I need to but it's really thin so it's not going to take a lot of space which I love um, again I got it off of Amazon and since I used Amazon Prime I didn't have to pay shipping so it was cool um, Sandy has a great question she's saying is the glitter flex washable yes it is it's very washable this is the same product that the commercial embroiderers use uh, for their uh, shirts and what have you. You can use it with embroidery or you can use it just with your cutting machine and fuse it straight onto a shirt without embroidery. Either way works, but it's washable. Um, I think, I don't have the, uh, the cheat sheet in front of me right now, but I think it's like a lukewarm wash uh, and then they say tumble dry. I like to lay mine flat to dry. Um, I think they recommend turning it inside out, uh, your garment, when you wash it. I just had a little test sew, so there was no way to turn it inside out, and I threw it in the wash six times just to see how well it did when I was doing my testing before I started to even sell the product. And it came out of the test sew, or I should say my test sew came out of the wash after the sixth wash just as well as it came out of the first wash uh, which was just as well as it looked before it went in the wash in the first place so yeah it, it washes really well and I threw it in the dryer with that I tried to abuse it a little bit to see how it would do I did have to iron it um, uh, but that was about it. it it held up I did just have to iron it you do just want to make sure that you get it fused properly and it'll be fine um, I think that should do it for today. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll have another Tuesday's tip, and I hope you will come back and, again, sign up for our newsletter uh, so you'll get notifications of the tips. We also, uh, when you sign up, uh, send out a couple of freebie designs, and uh, periodically I'll send out a free design just as a, a thank you. And it has our uh, special sale offerings in our uh, newsletters as well as um, our new releases. So if you want to stay up to date with what we're doing, um, that's one of uh, uh, the better ways to do it. Um, I think, let's see, Pamela says that I always, re this is a good point. Pamela says that I always iron on the reverse side after the original fusing. 
Um, I think that's a good idea, Pamela, because you're getting heat distributed on both sides of it. And I always like to iron my embroideries on the back side when I'm done fusing as well, just to protect the threads of my embroidery so they don't get flattened out. Uh, so I think that's an excellent suggestion. Uh, Sue asks a really good question. She said, "All the vinyl is all the vinyl on the website Glitterflex?" Yes, all my vinyl that I sell is Glitterflex. Um, that's my specialty. So all of it, whether it's the rainbow colors or the holograms or the ultras, they're all kind of ultras. It's just um, just different styles of colorations, but they're all glitter flex and they're all fusible. And we send out instructions with um, every sale and or order, I should say. And we send out, um, we have a YouTube channel that um, one of my earlier YouTubes, I demonstrated how to use the glitter flex uh, with embroidery and, a, and an iron. So we try to give you a lot of helpful tips so that you have success. Um, Susan has a question. Can it be fused with a heat press if there is embroidery thread on the design? Absolutely, Susan. Yes, it can. Um, in fact, that's how the commercial folks do it. They, they do all the embroidery and then they go do their heat press because it is faster. Um, I have not invested in a heat press, but because um, I'm trying to do it for the average, you know, I'm trying to do my methods similar to the average uh, embroiderer out there. Uh, but uh, on a heat press, you want to have your temperature, I believe it's 330 to 350 degrees. I, I think it's 330 though, um, degrees for 17 to 20 seconds. And that will work great. Uh, Pamela said, is there a solid color without glitter and what is it called? Pamela, all of our ultras are solid color. So the first... 30 or so colors on our website page I would guess it's all those first colors are solid so it's like a solid red or a solid green or black um, uh, unless it says two names in it like black gold then that's gonna be black with gold um, but all of the ultras other than black gold that comes to mind off the top of my head are solid colors if you have a question just email me um, you know, if you're not sure, because I know every monitor will show the colors a little bit differently, as well as every telephone, because all our graphic cards are a little different. So if you have a question about a color, just email me and I'll be more than happy to answer your question and help, help guide you to the correct color that you're looking for. Um, the rainbows are going to be a little bit more different colors. Um, blended in there I would say as will the holograms kind of like a hologram that you're looking through they have show different colorations but the ultras are going to be your solid colors um, Pamela also asks is there a solid color without glitter all I sell is the glitter flex um, but there are other uh, places that definitely sell the vinyl that does not have glitter if you're looking for just a standard um, vinyl. Um, I think I think that covers everybody. I'll be checking throughout the day um, and and uh, beyond <laughs> to make sure in case someone uh, watches this video after the fact and uh, has a question. But I'll be checking back in to answer any questions you may have. Again, we'll post this on YouTube uh, probably uh, so sometime later t uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm hoping, and on uh, Pinterest. And later we'll actually add captions, but I have to send that off to get done. So until next Tuesday, make sure, uh, oh, I forgot something. If you like the video, make sure to share this with your friends. Uh, I think we all learn from each other and and I like sharing tips with you and I hope that you will share my tips with your friends so that they can, you know, join in as well. So until next Tuesday, bye-bye.